Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Fun Stuff Friday and we are going to take a look at the Color It 72 colored pencil set. It has a stand, a travel case, and a sharpener. It does come with this little tiny Color It coloring book. It's just a little, little, little tiny thing that has a few small versions of some of their coloring book pages that you can test your pencils on. Cute little thing. All right, let's get this open. As you can see, it has a pencil holder. This is what they, they are calling their pencil holder. And basically what it is, is a bunch of holes in some cardboard. I don't find it very useful personally. Um, even in the case, it's not very stable. So what they want you to do is take your pencil. So I'm going to grab a pencil here and put it in, oh, put it in the case. And I just, I guess it works, kind of. I find it a little bit large, and it takes up a lot of space, so we won't be using that. All right, so let's take a look at the case. It's got a nice case. It's padded, which is great. has a really good spot for the sharpener that comes with it. And it has individual slots, which is fantastic. And it isn't so tight that you can't turn it so th to get your pencils out, which is great as well. This is not the order <laughs> that the pencils came in. Um, they did come in numeric order. I have resorted them to put them in color order because... Uh, this was the order that they came in. And yeah, it, it's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Like, it, they're just all over the place. So I have resorted them and put them into color order as I prefer them. All right. So we're going to go through these. We're going to swatch them and then we're going to um, test them and color with them a little bit on the swatch chart and uh, then we'll we'll give you an opinion of them. I was gifted these for Christmas by my husband so uh, it's been a long time since uh, since I got them. I haven't gotten a lot of use out of them yet. So let's play with them a little bit. All right guys grab your coffee sit back relax we're going to do a swatch. So it is swatch time.
Okay, so that wasn't too bad. So a couple of changes, as you probably can tell, um, these three reds here were intermixed and I didn't like them the way they were, so I moved them. Uh, so on your on the swatch chart uh, that I've created, if you do decide to download it and use it, uh, I have moved those and I also moved the mainland green and the warming gray. Under different light, the mainland green has a really, really strong um, green undertone and the warming gray does as well, but it also has a really strong gray undertone. So they're sort of one of those ones that I'm not sure where to put them. So depending upon the lighting <laughs> and the type of paper is uh, pretty much dependent on what color it's going to show first. All right, so as you can see, we have some good yellows, some uh, white into our light yellow, into our dark yellow, our peach tones into our oranges. This is the best selection of red that I have seen in any 72 set. Uh, we have a lot of red, a lot, a lot of red, and it's awesome. I like a good set of reds. Then we have our pinks into our purples into our blues, into our greens. So this set has a lot of reds and a lot of greens. Most sets usually have a lot of blue. And although I like blue, I don't want it to be the dominant color in my set. Um, then we have some browns and our grays and then two metallics, a silver and a gold. The names on these pencils are um, interesting. They're not horrible <laughs> but they they are definitely not typical names that you would find on a pencil so we have calming yellow yellow cake happy yellow autumn copper yellow ser serendipity caramel tan pleasantly peach pleasing orange spring peach orange burst thoughtful red radiant red optimistic orange zesty orange Loving Red, Red Serenity, uh, Red Hope, Revitalizing Pink, Devotion Pink, Tasty Plum, Hello Pink, Bubble Pink, Pink Bliss, Pink Inspiration, Pink Tranquility, Pink Kindness. <laughs> so as you can tell, <laughs> uh, Purple Harmony, Purple Cheer, Purple Faith, Purple Peace, Purple Belief, Cosmic Purple, Purple Grace, Enlightenment Blue, Blue Breeze, Inner Purple. Um, this one to me is more of a blue than a purple. That's why I've put it there. Uh, Pacific Blue, Magical Blue, Generation Blue, Mystic Blue, and Refreshing Blue. So as you can tell, the uh, color names are very personalized to this set. Uh, you're not going to get many other sets with these names. Uh, Friendship Green, uh, Restful Green, Mild Green, Creative Green, Spirit Green, Countryside Green, Quiet Green, Festive Green, Aspiration Green, Green Balance and Soothing Green, as well as Mainland Green. So definitely um, a specific name set. So it's not going to tell you that it's Hunter's Green or it's um, Hooker's Green or anything like that. It's got a specific name set to the set, which is interesting. Not one that you can do a mix and match just with the color name. You definitely would have to check the colors themselves. All right, I'm going to switch you over to the close up camera so we can do our testing. And I'm going to grab. Uh, there we go. I'm going to grab my paintbrush here. Got my water brush. And we're going to grab some reds. So I want Loving Red. And Yellow. So we've got Calming Yellow, Loving Red. And we're going to use magical blue 
So those are the three colors we're going to we're going to use. I'm going to use the sharpener here just to verify if it sharpens the pencils. Um, because this sharpener does come with the pencils. I did notice on the reviews there's some breakage issues. So as you can see it tore it just completely tore the the wood right off the pencil. That's not good. I didn't like that. Let's see. Alright, so I was able to fairly repair it, you know, fairly well sharpen it with the electric sharpener. So I'm finding that this sharpener itself isn't all that great. Now that may have been a problem with the wood, so just going to check on this one, and that completely broke the lead out. So I don't like their sharpener. Just saying. <laughs> Alright, so we did get a good sharpen with the electric sharpener. On all three pencils, which is great. Um, yeah, don't like the sharpener. <laughs> just, uh, you know, just put that back in its little holder and leave it there. <laughs> so I've got my my marks here for the water test. I'm going to fill in the little hole, the little circles. These are a wax-based pencil. Um, I do find, or did find while I was swatching them, that they are very crumbly. So they are very dusty. Be careful of that. So we've got our yellow, our red. And as you can see, I'm just going over it and filling in all the white spot the same as I would if I was finishing a page. And then our blue. They are a little, little dry sounding. So they don't feel like they're cutting into the paper, but they definitely feel a little scratchy. At least until you get a couple of layers on there and then they smooth out a little bit. At least that's what I'm finding. All right, going to dust that off. Make sure there's no remnants. And then we're going to put our pencils here. Let's see if I can get the lid off my brush. So as you can see, there's water in the brush. The brush is wet. All right, we're going to pull it across the yellow. Not seeing a whole lot of movement on the yellow, but yellow is really hard to see the movement. The ones to watch really are the red and the blue. And there is movement in the red. And in the blue. So definitely not water resistant. You will definitely have to um, make sure that you seal your work before you start adding your uh, accents. So anything that has a water base once put on top of this will move the pencil color. All right, now for our smudge test. Again, just going to fill the circle. Make sure that I color it the same way with the same kind of layering as I would if I was finishing a page. The reason for this smudge test is because with moving my hand back and forth over a page, I don't want those colors to move with my hand. So if it doesn't smudge, then I don't have to worry about 
finishing it and sealing it before I move my hand. Or I don't have to worry about putting something under my hand to make sure that my hand doesn't pick up that pigment and move it around. All right. Again, just making sure that all the white spot is filled. And then the blue. Now, most times, if it moves with water, it's going to move with your hand. It's just a, a um, it's just the way it is with with the pigment. If the pigment will move with water, it will move with friction, and that's basically what we're checking for right now. Is if the friction of our hand moving across the the colored surface, if it's going to move that color with the friction. And most times, if it moves with water, it'll move with your hand. Definitely. Even the yellow smudged a lot. So definitely moves with your hand. So you have to be careful while you're coloring to make sure that you don't rub your hand back and forth on your page. All right, so we're going to put these down for a second and we're going to grab some pinks. Um, yeah, let's do all three of these. Again, I'm going to put them through the sharpener. So we've got Hello Pink, a Bubble Pink, and Pink Bliss. So all three of them sharpened quite nicely. Just going to dust this off, make sure I don't have any remnants anywhere else. Oh, I, this one just broke. Weird. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so Hello Pink just got a whole lot shorter because it actually broke and then broke again in the sharpener. So let's make sure that none of the other cores are going to fall out. Like Hello Pink literally just fell out on my lap. Very weird. Do like that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the darkest, which is Pink Bliss. And we're going to do a three color gradient going from dark to light, building that color up. This, These are a wax based pencil, so they should smush together quite well. Sort of like a prisma, just a little bit firmer from what their comments on their Amazon states. So they do fill in quite nicely. Sorry, I was off screen. So they do fill in quite nicely. And they fill in that tooth on the lighter colors. Now we're going to take the medium color and we're going to go into that tail that we put in there. And we're going to fill in the color over top of the tail. And we're going to bring it out. Now this light area here is the tail for the next color. And this is the area for this color. So we've got our tail color here, our main color here, our main color here, and the tail for the next color here. And the next color is Hello Pink. Again, going into the tail, blending into that other, co the previous color, and extending it out.
All right, so I think it did pretty good on blending those together with without as much of a seam or basically not showing where the transitions are between the colors. I think it did pretty good with that. They do, they are a little bit crumbly or um, they, they do have dust, a lot of dust. <laughs> All right, so this one here is Loving Red. So depending upon the color, just make sure that you use your brush often. Just because, you know, you don't want to pick up that color with your hand. So just filling this in leaving a tail for the next color to blend into to create the new color. Now because yellow will pick up the color of red, we're going to put in the tail here for the blue to create green. And then we're going to come this way and fill in our color. up to this point. Now we're going to start making the orange here. Hmm. Just going to put a little bit more red in there. Extend it out into the orange, into the yellow. Okay, so with the red underneath, it creates more of a red orange. With the red on top of the yellow, it creates more of a bright orange, which is fine. Just going to fill in the area there. So that gives us a bright orange and a red orange. Now for the blue, we're going to go over the yellow and we're going to create green. So we have a little bit of green there, but it's more blue-green than green. So I'm just going to go over it with the yellow. The more yellow you add, the brighter of a green it becomes. So we're going to make that nice and bright green there. So we have definitely got a movement between red, red, orange, orange, uh, yellow, green, and blue. So with this set, see with other sets I found that if you just go over the yellow with the red, you're going to get orange. And with this set, uh, I'm finding that even if you go over the red with the yellow, the red is still going to be dominant even if it does show a bit of an orange. It's a, a really deep red orange where typically you want the brighter orange. So with this, it seems that you need to go from yellow into the red, or red onto the yellow, I should say, to create that brighter orange. But it still does create it, which is great. All right, now we're going to take our pinks again here. Actually, let's, yeah, yeah, we're going to do the blender with pinks. And then we'll do white with the deeper colors. So as you can see here, under on top of the white area, is some dust that I have rubbed my hand through and redeposited it on the page. So be careful of that because you can end up ruining your paper, your your picture with doing that. All right. So this time I'm just going to go one at a time. I'm not going to connect them. 
but because I'm going to use the Caran Dash Blender, it does require that I put down for the blender to work properly. It does require for me to put down a lot of color in order to move those colors together and blend out the line. So I'm going to butt right up against it, but I'm not going to overtake it with the next color. And again, building up that color, making sure that there's lots of pigment for the blender to blend into. And then the next color. Again, not going into the color, just button up against it. And then we're going to take our Caran Dash Blender. And we're going to go from light to dark. So we're going to go this way. First of all, to fill in the white spot. And then we're going to go this way to eliminate that connection. So definitely does blend quite well with the blender. Now we're going to use some reds. So let's do an orange to a red to a pink. All right, so we're going to go orange, red, pink. We could also do yellow, orange to red if we wanted to, you know, stay closer to those color connections. So if we go orange, now we're going to blend this with our white. So because we're going to blend this with our white, the colors are be going to become muted. Uh, the color at white is actually quite opaque, so it do isn't very translucent. So you are going to see the white on top of the dark colors. So if you're going to blend with your white, you are going to find that uh, your your darker colors are going to become a little bit more muted with the white. It's going to soften some of those harder colors. Now with this one, I am going over it a little bit just so that we can blend those lines together because the white will blend a little bit less um, fluidly, I guess. Uh, how's the word? It will, will um, take a little bit more to remove those lines where the connecting colors connect. So you need to add a little bit more of that connecting color into the line. All right, now I'm going to take the white. And we're going to start with the lightest color. I'm going to move into the red. And then into the orange. So it definitely does blend them all together. And as you can see, it does pick up, or not pick up, it does lighten those colors. So those colors do become quite muted, but it does blend them together. It does eliminate that white spot, as well as blend the colors together, creating that that little bit of a seamless blend there, like so. So they, it does definitely pass the blenders, whether it's the three color blend, the rainbow blend, the blender, or the white, it does pass all of those. The cost per pencil is, the cost for this set is $39.99. 
it does work out to be approximately 55 cents per pencil, which is a little bit on the high side. Um, I've seen uh, better pencils, like better performing pencils, much cheaper. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to start on the flowers here. And we're going to take our pinks, since we have them out. And that's kind of what color I want these flowers to be. And move you up so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start down here with the darkest pink. And we're going to go dark to light which means that I'll be blending with the lightest color, which is going to mute down some of the darker colors. So we're starting with Pink Bliss. Now I do find that on my swatch chart paper, they don't cover as well. Um, with a light hand. So you will have to put a few layers if you have a light hand. And of course don't use too heavy of a hand otherwise you're just going to end up filling the tooth of the page and then you won't be able to get any any more colors on there. Once once you burnish the page, it's really difficult to get more color on it. Unless you're Monia Gates and then, you know, you just look at it funny and it says, okay, okay, give me more color, give me more color. <laughs> that woman can get so much color on any piece of paper, even with the prismas. It's amazing to me. She has the Prismas mastered. All right. But we're not working with the Prismas, so. Now, in their comments and their answers to questions on Amazon, they do state that they are soft and wax based, like the Prismas, just a slight bit harder. Now I do not, um, I don't find that they're anything like the Prismas in uh, blendability or anything like that. They do blend well together, but you can definitely um, smush the P Prismas a little bit better. I don't think that these would be the alternative to Prismacolor pencils. They're a little bit too crumbly and a little bit too hard. All right. Next is Bubble Pink. We're going to use the Bubble Pink in the top shadow areas above the Pink Bliss, blending into that. And finishing off those shadow areas without making them too dark. Now you may be able to strong arm these into doing what Prismas do, but I don't like strong arming my pencils. <laughs> I just want them to do what, what they do. They're not a bad pencil. They're, they're actually pretty good. I've only had two break. The one that broke today and I had a red break, and I think that's because I closed the case on it. But other than that, I haven't had any, uh, any major breakage while I was swatching or anything else, so, which is good. 
All right, now we're going to go in with, let's see, let's tip that up there. There we go. Now we're going to go in with Hello Pink. And we're going to blend that all together. Now, I don't know if you can hear the dryness on the page, but it does lessen the more layers you get down. So, if you do find that they are feeling a little bit dry on your page, put down a couple of layers and then test them out. Then, then see if they still feel that way. If they're cutting into your page, then they are, they have a, a foreign um, bit of something in it, whether it be an unmelted piece of pigment or a piece of wood or something else. Uh, give it a sharpen and see if you, it goes away if it doesn't contact the company. Because you it, sometimes there's little bits of undissolved pigment that uh, gets all balled up and can be really, really annoying. So it's sort of like um, when you're when you're making gravy and and you put the flour in the water without making a roux, you know, that sort of thing. See if you if you've ever done that, I know I have. You will see that all the flour balls up into a ball and becomes a hard little black. And that's pretty much what the pigment does. All right, I'm going to put some yellow here on the center of the flower. And we're going to grab some green. I need a dark green. So we're going to use festive green. Now let's use quiet green. I think. Maybe spirit. Hmm, let's see which one. Yeah, countryside green will be which one we'll use. And then we'll use mild green. And put it through the sharpener. So we're going to do the, the flower and the leaves on this one. Uh, we'll do the butterfly and maybe a bug. And then, then we should be pretty much understanding of how well they're going to blend and color in small areas. Now, the only way that I'm going to be able to really, really test them is to color a whole page with them. But this tells me if there's something that I'd want to color a whole page with. Because <laughs> if it gives me problems on something this small, then there's definitely no point coloring a whole page with them. And I must say that the greens are a lot smoother after sharpening them. But I still have some dry feel. There's still, it, it just feels um, really dry on the paper. Now this could be mm, the paper I'm using. It, like I said, it could just be that the wax that they use is very, very thin in the darker colors and the pigment is more, which makes it drier. I'm not feeling it cut into the page at all just feels really dry on the page. But if you feel it cutting into your page, then you may need to contact the company and have them either replace or refund your money. Replace the product or refund your money. Mm, 
Okay, now I'm going to go in with the mild green. Okay, so this one here completely split down the core in the sharpener. So I'm still going to use it, but that tells me that there was a bit of pigment in there that caused a bubble in the core, which will also cause breakage issues. If there's bubbles in the core, then those bubbles are going to get broken by your sharpener, which will cause some break breakage issues as well. Now, because I used the, the electric sharpener on it, I know that it's not the sharpener and it's not me because I don't touch it while it's in the sharpener. The sharpener pulls it in, sharpens it, and spits it back out. So I don't touch it, so I couldn't have jerked or anything and created that break, which does happen because I do that all the time. I twitch the wrong way while I'm sharpening them and they go snap. <laughs> so that's why I prefer the electric sharpener. Even though it does eat down the pencil a little bit more, um, having to sharpen it over and over again because I've broken a lead eats the pencil just as much. So half a dozen of one, half a dozen of another. All right, so I'm going to take the orange, the yellow, and the red, and we're going to color the butterfly. So we're going to start with the red. in the deepest of the dark grayscale areas. This also tells me how well this um, set of pencils will do on grayscale. Because I enjoy coloring grayscale, I want a pencil that reacts well with the grayscale. That's the one thing I like about these little pictures on my charts is I can pick and choose. I can say, okay, I want to know how they're going to color on a line art. If they do really well on the line art, I'm going to go, okay, well, how do they do on a grayscale? And then I can go further down and say, okay, how can I blend these colors in different colors and uh, create a, a look? and go further down and fill in the entire swatch chart if I want to. Typically, the, the first half of this swatch chart pretty much tells me everything I need to know about a set of pencils. The rest of it is just um, playtime, you know, so that I can see what, what they can do beyond what I, the, the bare necessities of what I'd want them to do. All right, going in with the orange. So this is spring peach, which is a, a medium orange color. I definitely wouldn't call it a peach tone, but that's just me. And as all of you know, grayscale is when a picture has been either colored or drawn in a way that the shadows and shading of the, of the picture is already done for you so that you just have to follow along. It's not done for you. You do have to color it, but all you have to do is follow it to maintain that look that the artist has given you. So 
So I am finding that they blend fairly well on the grayscale, which is great. With grayscale, sometimes it's really difficult to blend, um, especially with a blender, because you can end up pulling that grayscale up to the top, which uh, does not work well. for uh, keeping that color from being grayed out. I'm going to add a bit of brown. So we're going to use natural brown. I'm going to sharpen this for his body. Again, there's something going on with the wood. My electric sharpener should not have done that. So there's a, a defect in the wood in this pe this pencil in this area. So I will have to s watch it when I sharpen it and see if it runs all the way down the pencil. So I'm finding a couple of different um, defect issues. Um, the wood seems to be extremely soft. This is the second pencil now that has torn the pencil with the sharpener. So that's not that's not making me happy at all. <laughs> all right, so that is our butterfly, and it did really well. Let's do our um, let's do our bug. Let's do a ladybug. And I'm going to do two different reds here. Again, I'm going to put it through the electric sharpener. And I'm not going to touch it while it's sharpening. And it did OK. Now I'm going to use a different red than the red I already used. I'm going to use Zesty Orange. seem to do okay too. There is one red that uh, had some color issues on it. I'm just going to look for it and see. If I already sharpened it. It may have been the red I already sharpened. I think it is. There was one that had a really weird black area on it. Oh, there it is. So here is another um, issue that I'm worried about is it looks like it's been burnt and like it goes into the pencil. So that concerns me as well. Like you can literally see where it's gouged into that pencil. So we're going to put this one through the sharpener. And it, even though it did tear it past it, it did sharpen it a little bit. Just seems that that part of the wood is really hard, but it did tear the wood away from the pencil, which is not good. Good to know, good to know. So we're going to color the ladybug here. So we're going to use zesty orange which is more of a uh, red than an orange. I'm going to lay it down. In all the areas we want to be red. They do maintain their their sharpness, their shape, which is good. This is another f form of grayscale, just like the butterfly. All right, now we're going to take our tasty plum and we're going to go into those shadow areas and darken them up. I'm 
think so. Concentrating on small things. <laughs> and then we're going to take that zesty orange again and go over it, building that color up and blending it into that shadow. And then we're going to get the black. Put it through the sharpener. Okay, so the black also has some issues with quality. You can definitely see where the pigment has bled all the way through the wood. The first time I put it down through, it broke off, and that's why I just put it through twice. Alright. So we have a breakage issue, um, which was noted by several people on uh, Amazon. And I. I will say yes I had some breakage issues. There's also a quality issue in the wood as far as I'm concerned. I've had three pencils that have wood issues. Two of which that tore completely, three of which that tore completely away from the pigment while being sharpened which is not good. Um, so yeah they are not water resistant. They are not smudge resistant. So make sure that you either blend with your Caran Dash blender or another blender that is going to put a layer of wax over top that is going to give it a bit of a water seal. Um, they do blend really nicely. They blend beautifully together. Uh, they do have issues with uh, quality. They, they are really dusty when you're coloring with them. So make sure that you have your brush handy. They, it does have one of the best sets of reds that I have seen in any 72 set. But there's some, some issues with the wood. There's a few different pencils that I've come across where sharpening them, either they, they broke in the sharpener or the wood has torn off um, from the pencil, such as this one here, where it just completely tore off, and the blue that ha that happened to as well, um, the red that it happened to as well. So this one was natural brown. The blue that it did that to here uh, is the magical blue. And the red that it did it to is right here, which is the radiant red. So that's three different pencils where the wood actually tore off of the pencil. So be careful with that. That was even, these two here was even in a electric sharpener and it still tore the wood off. I've had a, like I said, I've had a couple of breakage, um, not only with a hand, their own handheld sharpener, um, but with the electric sharpener as well. So this came off. I also had um, the orange, the lead itself split. I think it was the orange. Could have been the yellow. Maybe it was yellow. Yeah, it was the yellow. One of them, the uh, lead itself split in half during sharpening. And uh, it was almost as if it had a bubble in it. So I think it was the yellow or the orange. So there, like I said, there is some issues with... Could have been the green. No, it was this green. That's what it was. So this green here, the lead itself completely um, separated 
in in the sharpener. There are uh, issues, unfortunately, um, <laughs> and this is these are just the the few issues I have found coloring this small amount of of coloring here and doing the testing on them. Would I suggest purchasing these at the cost that they are? No, I wouldn't. Quite honestly, I wouldn't. There is better products out there with less issues than I have found with these products. Well, with this product. The names are absolutely gorgeous. They're, they're, they're really fun. They're wonderful names of the pencils. Um, the selection of red in it is fantastic. You know, um, if you want to buy it just for the selection of red, that that might be something that you can look at. Um, but personally, with the amount of issues that that have come forth so far, um, yeah, I I, I personally would. If the, like I said, these were gifted to me, so I'm of course not going to send them back because they were a gift from my husband. I was really excited about this set because Color It has some fantastic products. Not only do they have their coloring books, but they also have a marker set that uh, I have heard is wonderful. So I was really excited about the Color It pencils. Uh, hopefully they they. Hopefully all of these problems, all of these issues are just to one run um, and your sets and the sets after this one was made um, turn out to have a little bit more quality in the wood and in the cores. Um, this problem here, the this fragmentation or separation of the core is a bubble in the core. I can actually see where it was formed, where it, it just pushed the the lead apart. Now, if this core is, has bubbles all the way through it or separations all the way through it, I'm going to sharpen this for days and it's going to end up this long and I'm not going to be able to color with it. Which kind of sucks because it's one of my best light greens. <laughs> it will make me it will make me sad. So, yeah, would I suggest purchasing this set of pencils? No, I would not. Not because they're they're they color badly. They don't. They color quite nicely. Um, but they do have some issues with the with the wood. Now, if you have a set of these and you got them before Christmas and don't have these issues, or if you have them and didn't and got them after Christmas and don't have these issues, then more than likely my issues are due to a problem with their products or their materials, not their products, but their materials at the time that this was created. Now, I'm not saying that all of them are bad because these are material issues. There, it's not a product issue as in saying that the, the pencils themselves, the colors are horrible, they're, you know, they're too waxy or they're too dry or this, that, and the other thing. They are a little dusty. They do feel a little dry on the page. They're not cutting into the page, but they do feel scratchy. I have some issues with the wood. I have some issues with the core. So those four issues alone tell me not to buy these again. Uh, they're not smudge resistant and they're also not water resistant. Those on top of those issues tells me not to recommend them. So. Yeah, with that, <laughs> no, I would not recommend the Color It colored pencils. I find that I have too many issues with them. I, I'm not finding um, any problems with the colors themselves, 
but I am finding a lot of issues with the pencils themselves. All right, guys, with that, um, I hope that you have enjoyed the video. I will leave the uh, swatch chart below the video um, for you if you decide that you want to swatch on my swatch chart and you already have these or if you decide. Of course, I always tell people that this is my opinion and my opinion alone. Um, if you want to purchase these, by all means, purchase some. <laughs> like I said, these are material problems that are wrong with the materials that created the pencil. Now, if you want to purchase the pencils, I'm not saying uh, you're going to have these problems. I'm just saying watch out for these problems because I have them. But it would not be one that I would say, oh, you have to have the color it pencils there. You have to have them. It's definitely not one of those kind of pencils. And I'm going to stop talking now because I'm obviously just digging myself into a hole. <laughs> I'm trying to justify my opinion and, I'm, and I don't need to justify my opinion. And I have to remind myself of that. This is my opinion and my opinion alone. All right, guys, with that, I would like to say thank you all very much for watching. I hope this was uh, educational, informative, and at least helpful. Uh, and a little bit entertaining, maybe. You know, if it, if it wasn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artist that you enjoy. And always remember to relax, color, and stay safe, everyone. Until next time, bye-bye for now.